The, the, the reality is admitting it mm -hmm. was the first step. And then asking God, Lord, help me reclaim this ground. Mm -hmm. I think we spend so much time denying insecurity. Yeah. If you were to ask the average person, are you insecure? They would say, no, I'm fine. I love the Lord. I'm so yeah. excited for people when they succeed. Yeah. But if we're honest, there's something on the inside of us that doesn't feel good. And so being willing to investigate that and say, Lord, show me me. Mm -hmm. That's really a first step. What are some things, I mean, we can do even from, you know, I would call them spiritual disciplines yeah. or some practices that we can do, because all of us experience that, to be ready for those moments where we feel like I'm not worthy or mm -hmm. I got to hustle more. Well, I think we have to be willing, and this is where prayer is really important. Mm -hmm. We have to be willing to admit it. Yeah. Like that's that's Good. the first step, right? I mean, even in our salvation journey. Yeah, most people just won't even. No, 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 no. Yeah. Like we don't, so if you think about our salvation journey, we can't even receive the gift of salvation without first acknowledging that we're in need mm -hmm. of it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we have to first acknowledge that when we feel, um, when we feel fear, or even anger, we start to ask those questions. Why Why was I left out? Why wasn't I chosen? Why him, not me? Why her, not me? That there's a seed on the inside of us that we need to, to, to supplant, we need to pluck out. Yeah. And you know, you speak about rejection, man. I was thinking as you were talking about how, for me, one of the biggest areas that I've felt rejection in, um, and people may not know looking at me now, but it's it was in the area of my weight, like for, mm the vast majority of my life, especially in my childhood and young adulthood, I was literally categorized as clinically obese, wow. like quite literally. I yeah. remember an experience in high school where um, I was at a football game with some friends and uh, we were sitting in the stands and I talk about this in the book, but we were sitting in the stands and a friend of mine saw another one of her friends, a guy, and she said, hey, come sit with us. So he and his friends tried to fit into the area that we were in, it was really tight. His friends were able to make it to their area, their corner. But when he tried to pass me because of my size, he ended up like slipping and kind of stumbling and falling into me. Well, when he fell, I, I screamed. I was like, ah! Yeah. And this guy turned to me and he looked at me and he said, I don't know what you're screaming for. With a body like that, you're not good for anything except sex with the lights off. Oh my God. Yeah. And the thing, going back to your, your mentor's point about the spider web, the analogy I use in the book is because things like that had happened for so many years of my life, mm. it's like it created cracks in my heart so that when he said that, it literally shattered my heart because it landed on all those cracks and it shattered it. And I talk really transparently in the book about how that experience actually spiraled me into an eating disorder. I was bulimic for years. You went the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, it 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 really catalyzed that response because again, yeah. I was seeing myself through his eyes and through the eyes of classmates that had called me fat and Miss Piggy and all this for years. My own mother said those things, and so I think when I got to the place where I was ready to admit it and acknowledge it and really excavate and investigate where this came from. Mm -hmm. It started with that. It's like the words, getting back to the words and the hand that shapes your identity. This idea of not being wanted, mm -hmm. this idea of not being good enough, it started all the way back there. And so when I saw all my friends invited to speak at this thing that I wasn't yeah. invited to speak at, it, it triggered that same spiral. And the, the, the reality is admitting it mm -hmm. was the first step. And then asking God, Lord, help me reclaim this ground. Mm -hmm. I think we spend so much time denying insecurity. Yeah. If you were to ask the average person, are you insecure? They would say, no, I'm fine. I love the Lord. I'm so yeah. excited for people when they succeed. Yeah. But if we're honest, there's something on the inside of us that doesn't feel good. And so being willing to investigate that and say, Lord, show me me, mm -hmm. that's really a first step. Yeah, and there's this, there's like what we what we think consciously, and then there's this whole world under the surface yes. too that is all the stuff you're talking about because yeah. that event is a, again it's a connection to all of those other rough events. You are a champion. When I think about what you've overcome and where you've come to, you're someone people can really look to for advice. Not a lot of people have gone through what you faced mm -hmm. in your life. And I think it's really impressive. People can learn from what you've been through, whether or not they've been through, through the things you've been through. And mm -hmm. really, um, 
I think, win by, you know, by studying what you're talking about. One of the things that came to mind as you were talking was, okay, so you were, you were overweight, mm -hmm. and then you became bulimic, yep. and you were seeing your physical mm -hmm. body through the eyes of this you know, idiot that said this stupid thing mm -hmm. to you, but, and yet it still weighed, you know, weighed on you. Mm -hmm. you. You talk in your book about getting healthy. Yeah. And a lot of times we don't think about you know, being physically healthy, yeah. being connected to spiritual health. Yeah. Um, is it connected in your mind? A hundred percent. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, I, at my highest, was almost 300 pounds. And oh. I remember, you know, I had two little boys. I had like a big, like an infant and a toddler. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wanted to play with my boys, but my joints chronically ached. I was always tired. I just didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And there was one day when uh, my baby was crying and his room wasn't far from my room. I was laying down in my bedroom and um, I, I got up and I walked over to his room again, not far, but by the time I got to uh, the doorway, I was out of breath. Wow! And I remember thinking, and you would never know it. You look so fit. You oh, know, I could, well, like, that was a journey. That. Yeah. <laughs> that was a journey. Uh, I yeah. um, I decided in that moment. Mm -hmm. I was like. I can't do this anymore because I want to live a life where I can enjoy my children. And so, like many people, I had tried fad diets throughout my life. You know, sure, um, yeah. I did the Atkins thing. Um, I even at one point I, I just drank water and thought maybe I would lose weight that way. I just ended up really hungry. Um, <laughs> I tried, you know, no carb, low carb, all of it. But I made a decision in that moment to do the thing that I had never done before, mm -hmm. and that was eat right and exercise. And um, I will tell you, see, there's two types of comparison, and I'm saying this for a reason. There's two types of comparison, two outcomes. Physiologically, um, when we inhale air into our lungs, it's a process called inspiration. Interesting. And what inspiration does is it invigorates, mm -hmm. right? It, it gives you energy, it, it gives you vitality. So when we take a breath in, we feel alive. Yeah. That's what healthy comparison does. What catalyzed my health journey was healthy comparison. I came across a woman on YouTube who had started her weight loss journey at the exact same weight I was, almost 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. She had lost 100 pounds through eating right and exercising. And it was seeing her story mm -hmm. that made me believe that it was possible for me. And so in those moments when I wanted to have that chocolate cake or <laughs> I didn't want to go to the gym, I would put on one of her videos and I would just watch it. And, and that thing would give me life. Yeah. And so that's what helped me. I lost 100 pounds, um, ran a couple half marathons, and did all of that over the course of about a year because of wow. healthy comparison, because she inspired me. You ran a half me. marathon? I that did. From that weight? That's impressive. I did, I did. Wow. I'm telling you, she inspired me so much, yeah. and I found other people like her. Yeah, yeah. But I think the flip side is... Physiologically, when you exhale air out, mm -hmm. it's a process known as expiration, which is why when you take your last breath, it's called your expiration date. Oh, and so toxic comparison is what leads to feeling like you don't measure up, yeah. um, feeling like you're not good enough. You see somebody succeed and you feel like a failure. Yeah. Um, for many years, I had felt that way relative to my health. I would see you know, people who were in the gym and I would be like, I could never do that, I could never do that. Because there was a belief on the inside of me that I wasn't good enough. Yep. It wasn't until healthy inspiration was able to catalyze my potential that I actually lost the weight. I love that idea of healthy comparison because I yeah. think it's also true when you see somebody who overcomes something that you're facing. Yeah. Like, okay, I can do that too. Yes. Isn't it funny how, I don't know what it is, if there, there's something about and I want to get to the social media. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I do kind of wonder sometimes if social media is egging on a lot of this comparison. But then I, I think, well, you probably saw that positive mm -hmm. comparison. What did you call it? Uh, good comparison. It's healthy comparison. healthy comparison. Healthy, yeah. You, you probably saw that on social media, right? Yes. You saw it on, yeah, some, saw it on some, YouTube. On yep. YouTube, okay. The enemy. Yeah. <laughs> <For a minute. laughs> but, oh, we just think of them as, as a competitor. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. <laughs> but, uh, but you saw these videos, you're like, man, I can do that too. Yeah. And I, I so often think it's important to have friends who, like I've been giving this a lot of thought about building a core group yeah. of friends that 
I just, when, you, when you're around them, you leave better. Yes. How important is that? I mean, that seems like a huge yes. thing. Yes, community is so important. And so can I, I wanna answer this question and I'm gonna tie the thread back to our previous conversation. Sure. So a theme that I use throughout the book is, you know, we all know about King Saul and David, mm -hmm. right? And how uh, King Saul's insecurity was triggered by David. Mm -hmm. They come home from battle and the people say, Saul has killed his thousands, David his mm -hmm. tens of thousands. Suddenly Saul's like oh, eyeing great. him because, yeah. oh my gosh, the people approve of him more than me. So mm -hmm. there's this comparison thing. There's a third person in that story that we don't often talk about. And that's the person that God made me focus on throughout this book. And that's Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, even though Saul saw David as a threat, mm -hmm. the reality is David wasn't a threat to Saul because Saul was king. So David wasn't going to supplant him. He wasn't going to usurp him, right? David was a threat to Jonathan because Jonathan was heir to the throne. Yeah. And Saul actually makes a point where he says, um, you know, don't you know that as long as the son of Jesse lives, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. I think that might have been in like 1 Samuel 18 or something. And yet, knowing that David had the hearts of the people, um, knowing that David was celebrated by the people, Jonathan loved him. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, as a matter of fact, in that same scene He's like where, a living saint almost. It's I amazing. Mean, but yeah. it goes to show that like the way that we see other people's success is less about them or even the medium by which we see it, social media, because it gets blamed, and more about the posture of our heart. It's good. Because where, where Saul saw a threat, Jonathan saw a brother, and David was truly Jonathan's like yeah. threat, right? But, but Jonathan, in that same scene where Saul was like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm gonna eye David, Jonathan gave him his royal garments, gave David his weapons, so he would be more successful. And, and to your point, we need people in our lives who, regardless of whether we succeed or fail, mm -hmm. will still love us and will still support us and will still encourage us. Frankly, people who will push us into our potential mm -hmm. and they're not threatened by that, you know? And I, I do think that that's, that's something that we all need in our lives. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.